You're listening to episode 63 of Lifestyle Locker Radio with Brody Welch. The first things I like to encourage them to do is to stop thinking of themselves as a sack of meat. Right, and start thinking of themselves as a dynamic field of energy. Because a lot more becomes possible when we do that. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Hand, and welcome to the Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we dive into what makes an awesome lifestyle. From relationships to money mindset, nutrition to fitness, emotional health to peak performance, we bring you on an amazing journey to unleashing your human potential. So here's a little bit about our guest today, Brody Welch. She's a licensed acupuncturist, a board-certified herbalist, Chinese medicine expert, holistic health coach, and my favorite, a self-care strategist. She's the founder of Life and Balance Acupuncture in Corvallis, Oregon, where she's been treating patients since 2003. Brody helps caring, high-achieving women put themselves on their own to-do lists so they can trade stress and burnout for energy, joy, and vibrant health. She has helped thousands of clients improve their digestion, sleep, and mood, dial in a regular body-mind practice, and step into the next version of themselves. She leads self-care boot camp programs to help women bridge the gap between what they know they should be doing to take care of themselves and actually doing it. She's also the creator and host of A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. So here she is, Brody Welch. Everybody, today our guest is Brody Welch. Welcome to Lifestyle Locker Radio. Josh, I'm psyched to be here. I'm very excited to be here. We've had our fun challenges right now playing with our technology. and uh, But this is about being human, right, and connecting. And So this is going to be an awesome podcast. I'm not going to let a little uh, hiccup slow us down here. So, I already feel like we're more of a team having had to work through this tech thing together. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this <is a> bonding <laughs> moment. Right? No kidding. So you have you have a lot of neat things in your bio, and there there are a few things, but that I want to kind of really hit home on and touch about because I've never heard like something like self care strategist, which I'll let you get into next. But I want people to know because you're an acupuncturist. I'm not sure if that was your first, you know, direction you went in, but I want people to know who you are, know a little bit about your story and your past. What you know. Like maybe why you became an acupuncturist and how did these other pieces of the puzzle follow you? Yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. It's it's not exactly a direct route. Good. I started off, um, I grew up in suburbia in Massachusetts near Boston, child of a brilliant advertising copywriter set of parents. Um, my dad was a functional alcoholic who barely knew what grade I was in. And my mom was superwoman. And I was the classic overachiever. I did everything. Um, and I and I was like sort of obsessed with saving the world from an early age. I was like, I, I, I literally feel like I felt like I didn't have the right to be on the planet, much less take care of myself unless I was like helping to go in and and feed the hungry and work at homeless shelters and work on environmental issues. And this is, you know, like wrote my first petition when I was 12 and, you know, just all, all this like really heavy weight of the world on my shoulders kind of stuff. And so the only thing I could imagine myself doing, uh, going, going to college, I majored in government, history, economics, philosophy, like this, this integrated, I want to understand the system so I can change it. And, you know, thought that I would have this like NGO job or in activism or, um, or maybe in politics or being in law or something like that, change the world all at once. And I realized it was setting myself up for a life that I was going to hate. And so like, thank God they're activists, you know, like, I'm so glad there are people out there doing that work. And it just, it, I realized really quickly that I was, um, I, I was exhausted and hating life and it was, it was felt totally unsustainable. So after, after totally left braining out at this elite East coast, uh, school and, you know, getting the, uh, the whole, um, college degree thing, I then found myself just completely lost as to what was next because I couldn't imagine doing anything else. And so, but I had always been told that I had a gift with touch. And so I was always the kid going around and massaging people's shoulders at the dinner table. And so I thought, 
well, okay, maybe I'll go to massage therapy school at night and just get a day job and figure out life. And in massage school, I took a shiatsu class. And shiatsu is rooted in Chinese medical theory. So I learned about yin and yang. I learned about qi. I learned that everything in the universe is connected via this force, right, that we call qi totally. or energy. And then we have that and right it, there, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the force. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and like just that there are different yeah. kinds of energy and we can – and and that – it, and of course, we know from physics, matter and energy are the same thing, and they're changing into one another all the time. And that there are ways, there are these portals in the body called acupoints that we can use to influence the functioning of our internal organs. And the fact that we're connected to nature, that if it's out there, it's in here, that, you know, that really, that, um, that, everything that we need to know about health, it, we can think about health as an ecosystem as opposed to something that is this binary, um, you're either healthy or you're sick. It's more like, well, if something's out of balance, it's going to affect everything else in the ecosystem that is you. And, and that it's a true mind, body, spirit medicine where that our, our, our organs have these mystical powers, right? Our liver doesn't just detoxify our bodies. It has mm -hmm. to do with the free flow of emotions through the body. For example, it connects with the eyes, it connects with the imagination and the vision and, you know, the things and yeah. timing throughout the body. So realizing that there's the, there are these metaphysical and physical ways of understanding ourselves that just rang true for me. And it spoke to this deeply spiritual part of myself that, um, I, that, that I felt like it was, everything that I got from hanging out at Walden Pond as a kid or like going for walks in the woods and, you know, the, things like that really just feeling like most alive and most, most in touch with source in nature. And so Chinese medicine philosophy, just like, I just fell in love with it and then knew that the, my next step was the 3000 hour master's degree. And so I, I did massage while going through acupuncture school and then opened my practice, um, in 2003 in July, and so, and I've been in love with it ever since. And of course, realizing that as um, seeing people over and over again in clinic, realizing that whether people come in for pain or digestive issues or fertility issues or for chronic migraines or for just whatever they're dealing with, that I was finding myself saying the same things over and over again to people in terms of mm -hmm. the, the, the ways of that Chinese medicine, right? So acupuncture is like the sexiest branch of Chinese medicine. It's, you know, that, um, yeah, we sling needles. That's not all Chinese medicine is, right? There's this yep. Chinese, Chinese herbs is a branch. Lifestyle and diet is a branch, like teaching people how to live in harmony with nature and harmony with the Tao, with, with the way, um, as well as the uh, meditation as well as body work. And so I kept racking up more and more tools to help people, right? So, okay, let's, let's learn uh, Qigong, right? Energy exercise, energy cultivation practices so that I could teach people. I got a yoga teacher certification. I was like, oh, people can, people can do acupressure on themselves. What if they did essential oils on acupoints? And what if they, you know, so just mm -hmm. uh, collecting all these tools, getting certified to um, nutrition, various functional medicine classes, and I realized that none of this actually amounts to anything if people don't put it into practice. Yeah. And so that's led me to what I'm doing now, which is it's like in the self-care strategy department, um, basically helping helping to coach people into how to apply Chinese medicine philosophy to their lives so that they can show up fully present, energized, digesting well, comfortable in their own skin pain-free, you know, like whatever it is, because the, the, the things that we do every day are the most powerful levers we have over how we end up feeling. And so it's just, it's, it's realizing that, um, that, that really, um, helping people see themselves in a new way, like to come around to my side of the lens and look through the lens of Chinese medicine to see themselves. First of all, what element type are they? Are they wood, fire, earth, metal, water? How can they understand their tendencies and their biology to really befriend their own constitution, to make more medicinal choices in their daily lives so that, because a lot of times like people are like, oh yeah, I know I'm supposed to eat whole foods. I know I'm supposed to get enough sleep. I know I'm supposed to exercise, but there's like this whole other way of being that, that, that has to do with not only health, but self-actualization and personal growth that has to do with embracing all of the, um, the different elements within us instead of just sticking to like the, the ones that we're most comfortable with or the ones that we may, might have 
uh, gotten a lot of praise for um, early on in the environment that we that we grew up in. So, so basically, uh, I love I love all aspects of Chinese medicine, but especially watching people transform based on the things they're doing in their daily lives. And it's also kind of cool to wield needles and to watch the life force at work. You know, watching people mm-hmm. come in with pain who leave not in pain. That's always very exciting too. That's cool. So I want to run back to something you said as you yeah, were yeah. starting your journey. You said, you know, you wanted yeah. to learn the system, mm-hmm. fix the world. I think you learned the system a different way. Yeah, exactly. I'm right. allowed to say that. I mean, you kind of did that that search. You kind of did the thing, the, you know, I want to do all of these things, but you found something that was kind of a passion, but now you can connect to the planet through people versus, you know, it, politics or whatever it may be. It, exactly. And and really, like, with, the, with to be a political activist, to some degree, you have to whip people up into a state of frenzy all the time, right? You have to, <laughs> you have to get them to get them to act. There has to be urgency. There has to be some element of the stakes are high, people, you, need, you know, and, and certainly the stakes do feel high, right? Like there's um, no matter what side of the political spectrum we're on, it, it feels like we're in this increasingly polarized world and, and where, you know, things like climate change is like, wow, this the consequences are are, are going to be imminent here. Um, but the idea that, that one of the things that, that I feel still it like in, infuses my work today is this idea that our cultural, our, our culture is totally yang addicted. So in Chinese medicine, the yin and yang, that symbol that we're all probably familiar mm. with, the white, white and the black with a little bit of each, you know, that, that flow into each other. We think of them as these opposites, but they're, they're opposites that need each other, that support each other, and that transform into one another at their extremes. So we're in this culture that glorifies busyness, that prizes the doing over the being, that prizes speed, the what it looks like as opposed to what it feels like. And so all of us are like, we're busy. We're, pr- we're busy and we're producing stuff and we're, and we're earning money and we're out there and we're on social media and we're in this like stimulated external state all the time. And then we might get home from our, from our job and like go running or like go, you know, do mm-hmm. this other effortful thing in an attempt to find quote unquote balance. And really it's like, you know, it, it, there's, there's this emphasis on doing that, that wax people out and that creates this sense of, uh, that really divorces us from how we want to feel, from from who we really are, uh, from our spiritual values, uh, like apart from what the world wants from us. Like what? How do how do we want life to feel, and how do we want to show up in it? And recognizing that really self care, it you know doing the things that we need to do to take care of ourselves. It's like I was doing that for so many years, and then but recently. Um, well, it, in the past five years, I married a widower and found myself with two Insta kids, right, twelve mm. and eight years old. And suddenly, and on top of my busy practice and my online uh, business teaching online classes, I was suddenly a parent. And it was like, whoa! I, I so it was like I added and I added and I added and I didn't subtract anything. And so it's like here I am preaching about wholeness and this holistic system of body, mind, spirit, wellness, and I'm like. Um, racing to do all the things, right? You know, that to to make sure that I'm that I'm nourishing myself, that I'm meditating, that I'm that I'm doing, um, you know, the the right kind of exercise for myself. And really, it was like completely unsustainable, because simply there was just too much on my plate. And recognizing that that really, like, the fundamental thing that needed to happen for me was like moving from that extreme yang addiction to just doing less. To like really, really getting clear that like that that chi is something that is finite and that like and and that preserving it allows us to allows us to flourish on a level that that we can't otherwise and that it really does require um, some discernment. And some honoring the yin, recognizing that like, yeah, well, it's, well, it might be comfortable for me to think of myself as this like a busy, successful acupuncturist that I have to let go of some of that, you know, like my ego has to be willing to part with that in order for me to, to actualize the rest of my humanity. Yeah. And you mentioned something that, that, uh, that I want to actually talk about. Um, but I want to circle back for one second and you're saying, you know, the, in politics, people are polarized and, and you're in a field as well as, as I, you know, as a chiropractor, we're in fields where people kind of look at us sometimes like, wait, what do you do? What kind of, what Mm -hmm. do you do? So that, that polarization, I think is is pretty crazy that it goes from everywhere from politics to, to healthcare and, 
and you know having this that that balance and ha- teaching people to see through your lens is probably yeah. one of the most important things because once once they see it's it's easy to have these conversations don't you think Absolutely. And and one of the one of the first things that I like people to, to to bring people to my side of the lens, one of the first things I like to encourage them to do is to stop thinking of themselves as a sack of meat. Right. And start thinking of themselves as a dynamic field of energy. Uh-huh. Because a lot more becomes possible when we do that, right? Like that we, we know, for example, with something like back pain, right? That back pain is sometimes connected with tissue damage. Mm-hmm. But sometimes not, right? There's plenty yeah. of people who have back pain that you, they get x-rays, MRIs, and people are like, eh, you know, like you shouldn't necessarily be in debilitating pain. And other people who have slipped discs, who have, you know, various like degenerative disc syndromes or whatever that are utterly pain-free and fully functional. And so we know that, and, and yet people come in and they're like, my doctor says it's bone on bone, you know, like they're, they're, they they have these these terrible ways that we shape our thinking through language uh-huh. around uh, around what might be possible or limiting to the body. And certainly I'm not saying that acupuncture is the best condition in every case. Like certainly we can't, if you sever your rotator cuff somehow, you know, like you, you're, yeah, surgery is going to be a better, a better option. But for so much of what people live with in a chronic way, the body knows how to heal itself. And acupuncture and in Chinese medicine in general is a great way of getting the body's attention and saying, hey, like put the energy here, bring this back into the fold. Um, it and And it's amazing. I think how many how long some things have been going on for people. They've actually given up hope on the, of it ever getting better. And yet it's possible because we are, the body always wants homeostasis and there's an intelligence to the body. It's not just, we're not just this like sack of bioelectricity that's disorganized. It's organized, oh, right? Yeah. We have this, we have, uh, you know, like there's, it, it is smart. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, it, and really like it's, it, you know, the, the analogy that, that we use in Chinese medicine all the time is that, um, where there is pain, there is no free flow. And where there is no free flow, there is pain. So that idea that if the if the energy is supposed to be flowing like a river and something happens, trauma or repetitive use or a stuck emotion or whatever it is, that it's like a log jam in the river. And on one, one side, you get the flood and the backup. And on the other side, you get uh, the, the undernourished fish and ecosystem that needs the water. And so it's about, okay, let's let's go in, let's remove that stagnation, let's restore the free flow of chi so that it's not too much over here and not enough over here. And let's look at what kinds of uh, of, of energy that is. Is it more yin? Is it more yang? Is it, you know, that, et cetera. And as, as we have pretty sophisticated frameworks for thinking about not only pain issues, but internal medicine as well. And, and thinking about, you know, that the idea that, it's not one condition, it's it's one person and looking at what's going on in that individual person's ecosystem that's out of balance to restore harmony to the whole. Yeah, I mean connecting connecting to connecting people to what actually heals is themselves. And it's it's such an it's yeah. a it's such a simple concept. And people look at me sometimes like I have four heads. Well I say, you know, mm-hmm. if if the if it was a, a woman and, and she has a child or children I say, you know, what what put those two cells together that made, you know, 10 trillion cells or whatever it is in nine months or around, and now you have a living, breathing human being? Did you have to, like, take a pill for that? Did you have to, <laughs> I mean, like, what had that work? Oh, I never yeah. thought of it that way. Right. You know, kind of thing. But I want you to touch on, you mentioned, uh, I took your your quiz, the, 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 the was it Chinese element? Your Chinese that, element, Chinese yes. element quiz, right? Uh-huh. So... Yeah, you know, I came up as as a you know a fire. Okay, right? that's me. Yeah. So, but can you kind of go can into can you kind of go into all of those like the the branches of that? Because you know, the, to me, this is. I mean, I've heard this, but I've not mm-hmm. heard it. If that yeah. makes sense, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to talk about the five elements. Uh, so. So we think about yin and yang as like, if first of all, if everything's energy in the world, it becomes very hard to talk about, right? So mm-hmm. if we're refining, if we're looking at light through a prism, we can see all the colors. Mm-hmm. And so if we look at chi and we throw it through the prism of, for example, yin and yang, it's like, okay, well, every, it, like these are relative terms relative to each other. So for yin and yang, we, we have things like that. Yin is is the dark, the restful, the cooling, that the the black part of the circle, mm-hmm. and and Yang is going to be the active, the warming, the busy, the doing, the light part of part mm-hmm. of the circle, and so, um, and and really from Yin and Yang theory, we can get 
five element theory in that, for example, like heaven and earth are, are going to be the first sort of external manifestations of yin and yang. We've got the heavens above, the yang, um, the, in, the the insubstantial, the ethers, and then we've got the yin, the solid, the the foundational, um, the nourishing below. And so it and and if we look at, for example, the the cycles of the seasons, we go from winter to spring to summer to late summer to fall and back to winter, right? So everything in life goes through this period of birth, growth, maturity, decline, and death, Mm -hmm. right? And so like everything in nature follows this cycle. We've got this cycle going on inside of us right now. We've got cells that are busy being born and cells that are dying. We've got, you know, like that Mm -hmm. in our, we can look at our entire life as like going through that once. So, So we're in these cycles, we're going through them and they are within us both at the same time. Similarly, we are all gifted with a particular genetic endowment that where we have particular constitutional strengths and weaknesses, and we have particular personality tendencies that are innate to us. And certainly, you know, like these can be shaped by our early upbringing and, you know, that certain things that can be reinforced, but we all have our innate gifts and we all have physiologically the place where our roof will leak when it rains, right? Like our, mm-hmm. our sort of, uh, you know, we all know that person who like never gets the flu or we all know that person who has an iron stomach and can eat anything. And we, you know, like we all have these sort of things about our constitution that are weaknesses and that are strengths. And so the five elements is really uh, the, in Chinese medicine, we call them wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And they correlate with the season of the year, with a taste, with a smell, with an emotion, with um, with a various, like with a kind of energy, you know, like that we can think of as like being exemplified by the seasons or exemplified by a phase of life. And so, so we can think about the water element, for example. Um, the water element relates with the kidney and bladder system. So th- therefore the water in the body, right? the water metabolism. And so, um, and it has to do with the emotion of fear. Water element is said to house our potential of who we could be in this life um, and our will, our ability to uh, to exert power in the world. And so um, so it and and also so like it, it, so there are these correlations where like in the winter, the chi goes inward. So watery people tend to be really deep thinkers and philosophers and people who are very reflective, like like frozen water or like still water, right? That there's mm-hmm. there's a reflective capacity to that. They also tend to be um, very like strong individuals in the sense that like the tree is not going to survive the evergreens outside my winter or, or what my window are not going to survive the winter unless they're like hardy and unless they've pulled their sap deep down and for, for to conserve and so so like water okay like people who are water types might have issues with um, with for example kidney or bladder or they might have, have issues with bones and joints because that's again the deepest tissue of the body so there, there are these relationships that that we can look at and fill philosophical traits um, and, and proclivities that we can think about. So we move from water to wood and wood is the season of new growth and upward outward energy, right? Like the world is coming to life. We're coming out of dormancy. And so wood types are all about upward outward. Like I'm a wood type. I like leading. I like teaching. I like learning new stuff all the time, right? So yeah. it's that upward outward energy of the of wood that um, an upward outward energy emotionally looks like anger, right? Or it yeah. looks like being kind of volatile or, you know, that um, wood types like a tree is our archetype for wood. We need to be flexible enough to bend in the wind, but we also need to be rooted, right? We need to, we need to be yeah. nourished by that water element. So knowing what kind of a constitutional type we are, we, kn- we understand situations that might lend our gifts sort of like that where that might highlight our gifts and also situations like knowing this about ourselves knowing that a water type might need a little bit more alone time they might be a little bit more introverted than someone like you who's perhaps a fire type who is recharged by being with groups of people that's like you know full-on summer or right? things are yeah. happening things are busy things are uh stimulating you, things are do, have, you, have you been stalking me all that have I been? I have not been stuck. Should I be stuck? No. <laughs> You're describing so, me. No, good. Keep going. I love it. Yeah. Well, okay. My quiz is accurate, which is funny because it's only ten questions long. But yeah. um, you know the the yeah. So fire types are you know like that they they tend to be like the life of the party. They tend to be really magnetic because people are drawn to fire. We want to like fire's warm. Fire is captivating. You want to just be around fire because it feels good and they make people feel good and they're you know just 
fire is, you know, that anyway, so we, we can think about like fire types of people are, um, they're naturally charming, they're naturally social. Um, and, and the emotion or the, the organ system, organ system, by the way, for liver, uh, for spring and wood is liver gallbladder, color green, taste of sour, blah, blah, blah. Um, we get into the fire element that it's the heart and the small intestine, right? So like the sort of the, okay. the small intestine is sort of like, where the digestive fire happens and mm -hmm. and heart is it tends like the cardiovascular system we don't want we don't want that to be too hot and agitated right like the the heart needs totally. to be like even keel and cool so 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 just as i'm describing these they all do play into one another like we all have all five elements within us but we tend towards we, we tend towards emphasizing one or two above the rest usually. And knowing that about ourselves can help us recognize like when the only tool we have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Like that we can, oh yeah, right. Like that in this situation, it doesn't necessarily serve me to be effortful. Or, you know, like maybe I just need to like relax and let, you know, just to, so we can start seeing what, what keeps us in balance and what keeps us out of balance. That even the fire types need to take time out and to breathe, right? And to and to relax yeah. and let go. <laughs> and totally. and it's like and it's like the least appealing thing to you, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. I like, like to go. Yeah, so <laughs> Sitting around is exactly. boring. You know, I, I enjoy right. reading, but I, you know, if you sit down and watch a movie, I'm like, oh, really? I'd rather go for right. a hike at nighttime with a headlamp at 20 below zero. That's like yeah, ex yeah. exciting to me. Exactly. Right. So, so that, that yang within yin all the time. Um, so, so then earth types, right? Earth types like harmony. And they are because Earth is about nurturing all life. So Earth people are sweet. They're rock solid. They're loyal. They are also it, it, the organ wise. It's the spleen and stomach. What we call like the mainly that. I think they were going for pancreas back mm -hmm. in in ancient China. But it's so like the foundation of of taking non-self and converting it into self. So that idea of digesting life and digesting our food and making use of it, sorting the pure from the turbid, that's the function mm -hmm. of the earth element. And and so so earth people tend to be super loyal, super, uh, super supportive, super sweet, but they also can put their own needs last and be a little bit too, um, like they can be caregivers that neglect themselves, right? And and people who maybe overeat to ground themselves, right? Because they're denying themselves that sweetness that they so easily give others. And then there's the metal types, which is um, with metal types, um, metals is sort of an unusual element in that it's like it's metals obviously are found in nature, but we refine them. So metal people tend to be very refined. They tend to be very stylish and artistic. They tend to be meticulous and organized. They're engineers. They are um, they're, they're people who like hierarchy. They like to know black and white. They like to know where they stand. Um, yeah. And the organ system there is the lungs and the large intestine, right? So taking in and letting go. And so okay. like the large intestine is about like getting rid of what we no longer need. The lungs are about taking in new fresh inspiration. And so like the metal element, it helps us with discernment. It helps us with judgment and it helps us with like really letting go of what we no longer need in life. And so somebody whose house is messy, who like maybe they have a difficult figuring dif difficulty figuring out um, what what they really should let go of. Um, maybe they are depressed, right? They're not taking in new inspiration right, necessarily. Um, it, anyway, so so we get we can look at we can learn a little bit about ourselves in terms of from a five element perspective, and we all can, also can recognize that all of us have the five elements within us, and that they each support each other. So like that water, you water a plant to make it grow. So water supports wood, and you chop down a tree to make a fire. So wood supports fire. Fire becomes ashes, which creates earth, and earth engenders metal, which then enriches water. So there's like a creation cycle, and then there's a control cycle where water puts out fire, and fire melts metal, and metal chops down the trees, and trees can uh, bust up through the earth as they grow, and earth can dam the water. So there's a game of rock, paper, scissors that also takes place within the energies in the body. And so we can use what we know about, like we can we can access these elements by how we're living. We can access them philosophically. We can access them through the portals of consciousness called acupoints on the body. We can increase, we can strengthen particular elements or particular aspects, the yin or the yang of each of these elements with the foods that we eat, with the supplements and herbs that we take. Um, and in Chinese medicine, we, te we tend to blend herbs together so that we address one underlying cause that's, that's giving rise to a multiplicity of symptoms. Okay, this is neat. So, in in your, I like that. I'm glad we just did that because if 
I'm sure there are people that they're like, oh, wow, I never heard any of this. This is so neat because it's it, – how old is, is acupuncture? How many thousands <laughs> it's, it's of years? Exactly. <laughs> I have People claim that it's 5,000 years old. I think we can safely say that it's at least 3,000 years old because I don't know what the evidence is there. But yeah. but it's we know that our oldest textbooks go back 2,200 years and that oral tradition goes back probably 1,000 years before that. And so it's like, yeah, so if we look at the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine, that's like 2,200 BCE. And we look at like the Shennong Bansao, like our earliest herbal text, same period of time. And yeah, so it's it's old. Yeah, and I'm I'm making that statement because people that, you know, that are listening more than likely are much more open. But I may have mm-hmm. the we may have someone that goes, wow, what? But acupuncture and chiropractic that's kind of like woo woo, isn't it? Not yeah, really, right? right. It's, <laughs> Not it's, really. It's so it's so annoying, like to be lumped in with uh, you know, with with a lot of things that somebody just invented last week. It's like, yeah, that in in Chinese medicine, something has to have lasted at least a few a few hundred years to be considered like that. The, then then it becomes maybe accepted, like as yeah. opposed to like the newest, the latest, the most up to date. Well, yeah. So that I just want people to know because this is this is really yeah. powerful stuff. My experience has has been unbelievable. The experiences I've had with acupuncture from um, I was hit head on by, I'm just going to tell like a 20 second story here. And I think you'll oh, appreciate please, it anyway. Yeah. But I was hit head on by a drunk driver in 2005, uh, held the steering wheel with my left hand, hand, my right hand went out to my wife. So this left hand, we got hit a guy at 50 miles an hour. They, they like cut across cow. the highway. So long story short, my wrist was a mess. I was getting ready to graduate chiropractic college. You know, I'm like so excited to be able to, to do what I spent, like, like you said, thousands of hours learning to yeah. do. And I'm like, holy crap, I don't know if I'll be able to practice. So I was doing everything. I was getting adjusted four times a day, make sure like the neurology is clear. I was getting massage. I was uh, everything, self-therapy since I had to take all these classes. And I never seen it, have never seen an acupuncturist and came back to New York City from Florida. And uh, we had an acupuncturist who, that worked with us in our office, or my father did at the time. And she did some work with me. Then it was my first experience. You know, it was like I was like in La La Land when they she laid down, and I'm like, okay, I wonder yeah. what's going on. I was a, just as a student, so I was like very philosophical. But I was very mechanical in my brain, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's like, oh, we'll do this. We'll stick this and this and this and do all these things. And I just kind of zone out. And then we did some work with my wrist. And within like a couple of sessions, I was like, no way. And I have not, this is 2005, and my wrist has been kick-ass. I mean, it, to take care of it and what what she cleared. And I had torn cartilage, compression yeah. fractures in my bone, you know, all sorts of crazy things. And I'm not willing to go and look and see what, what may be wrong because it doesn't make a difference for me at this point. It's like, wow, the body did what it needed to do. It needed to heal and it needed to get through this process. But that was bad. And that was like, my first experience was like, holy cow, this is like the miracle experience. You know? Wow. That's, first of all, what I can only imagine how traumatic that must have been, right? Like yeah. the, just thinking like, can I even use, can I even put to, put to use all this knowledge that you just spent amassing? And I'm so glad that you, that, that acupuncture was something that you found and that you gave it a shot because it is, it's, it's the, it's the kind of thing that, that, I mean, there's first of all, there's a ton for like the skeptics out there. There is there is a ton of research about uh, about what acupuncture is useful for, and really like we're way past the like does it work, and we're much more interested in the like how many sessions, how close together is it going to take for X Y Z conditions in order to to make a difference. And so yeah. it's uh and 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 the fact that that we've identified some of the mechanisms of action by which acupuncture is effective for the body, but not nearly all of them. So we know that, for example, like you're in La La Land because of the endocannabinoids that, uh, uh, you know, that, totally. that, are, that are released, right? Our body's natural feel-good chemicals. So people are often so relaxed that they go to sleep and, you know, which is kind of absurd when the people are like the, you know, number one objection to getting acupuncture, I'm afraid of needles. Well, Everybody, nobody loves needles. Nobody thinks like, oh yeah, this is this is like a great idea. Except maybe if you're like covered with tattoos or something. But yeah. but for the for most of us, it's like a treatment of last resort. And yet, one acupuncture needle can fit inside, or forty acupuncture needles can fit inside one hypodermic. So it's just a totally different tool. And then these little yeah. fine filaments go into the body in a way that is like that it naturally sets off the body's feel good chemicals and relaxation chemistry. So it shifts you out of your fight or flight and down into rest and repair like 
immediately if that's if that's a place that you occupy or like you, yeah. you need to ratchet down the nervous system. It also is like a little bit of a micro trauma that gets the body's attention to like, ooh, go go put the energy here. You're not quite done healing this yet. Mm -hmm. And so even even things that have been around, like I think about uh, patients in their 80s who've had, you know, walked through the cane for 20 years. I've seen them be able to ditch the cane and once again feel the bottoms of their feet and and reverse the spinal stenosis such that the doctors think well, we must have given you the wrong x-rays because we don't see evidence of that anymore, you know, and it's the, it's the kind of thing where like that, again, matter and energy play into each other all the time. And just, so if we're just deciding that our bias with acupuncture is that we're going to affect the chi aspect as opposed to the stuff aspect, mm -hmm. you know, or the, the, uh, you know, playing with the kind of the intangible rather than the, the, the yin stuff of who we are that we can yeah. touch, um, then it's, it's amazing what can be possible really quickly. Agreed, one thousand percent. It's it's you know I have this, those cool experiences well where people are like is it it must be just by chance, really? What else are you doing? Uh, yeah, exactly. No, nothing. Exactly. Oh, okay. Right. Just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, it's it, really funny. It is very funny, but it's neat because it, and then a lot of times that light bulb goes on and they kind of see the other side. They see through that lens, like we were speaking about earlier. Um, but I want to just touch on two more things that I think are just interesting. You know, and I mentioned in the beginning is you said you deal. Hold on, hold on. Where is I here? You're a self care <laughs> strategist. Yes. So, kind of describe what you do when when working with clients or patients or whomever. To, you know, as a like someone that works as a self care strategist. What, what kind of things are you doing with someone in that in that place? Oh, so many things. Okay. So many things. Uh, but basically, so f from my one-on-one -on -one clinical work, I, I, I definitely – first of all, as as you can tell, I'm passionate about teaching people about Chinese medicine in general. So apart from helping someone see how they're living is related to what their problem is. So in other words, like if somebody's got, let's say acid reflux, right? It's like, it's going to be one thing they can come in and I can needle them and I can give them herbs, but if they don't change their diet, we're not going to get very far. Got it. So, Lifestyle. so part of, so part of self-care strategy is as simple as, as yeah, diet and lifestyle. But part of it is also just like, I, I think about just like being strategic in terms of what's going to have the biggest, what's going to leverage the most change with the least amount of effort for someone. So for example, um, as I work with people in a coaching capacity, it's, it's, uh, there, there can be, there can be lots of different things causing a person's issues and figuring out like which of the things like it is it is it lifestyle is it diet is it emotions is it toxicity like kind of just l looking at like where are we going to focus and where where is the person going to focus their self care such that they can make the most progress and and a lot of that is about applying Chinese medicine to daily life and have, helping someone to understand like it's really like self care 2.0 you know like the 1.0 right, cool. I'd say is is like the daily body habits that we like for example like, you know if I have a podcast a healthy curiosity and as I'm sure um as I'm sure you have. A similar experience, you interview a sleep expert, a pain expert, a cardiologist, um, a digestive system, you know, like a microbiome expert, and everybody has the same five recommendations, right? You know, like everybody yeah. says, like, we all need to be sleeping, we need to be eating a whole foods diet, we need a, a handle on stress, we need to have community, we need to have a spiritual uh, practice of some kind, a mindfulness practice, meditation, qigong, uh, we need to be moving our bodies. The, uh, we need to be hydrating, we need to be eliminating, you know, like there's yeah. some basic stuff that we all need to do. And that's like kind of core competencies of self care. And so one thing that I do with people is, is, is that people blame their lifestyle for why they can't do these basic core competencies. Like, oh, I'm too busy or, I, you know, and it's like, really? Okay, well, let's let's actually strategize around that. Let's figure out what needs to change about your daily life such that you can spend, you know, 20 minutes a day um, meditating, exercising, preparing yourself healthy food, whatever it is that's going to get them the most mileage. And so it really is about sort of like um, – if you want to turn, figure like lifestyle hacking, you know, or figuring out what, how of we course. can, how we can make these small changes that then become the new normal 
and then get better from there. And because a lot of these things, it's like people feel overwhelmed, right? They're like, okay, well, I'm 50 pounds overweight. How am I ever going to lose that? Or like, I've been, I've been dealing with stress and anxiety and depression all my life. I don't, you know, like, yeah, yeah, mindfulness, whatever. I like my mind is too busy to meditate, you know? And it's like getting around those limiting beliefs that people might have that's blocking them from their ability to get well. And so, uh, you know, so basically what that looks like is I listen with compassion. I meet people where they're at and I, and I refuse to let them stay stuck. Yeah. You, you help, know, because you help them get out of their own way. <laughs> yeah. I catalyze change for them because it's really, you know, like that, but that I, in my teachings and, and studying with uh, my, my Taoist teachers and on, along the way is that there are, you know, that as long as someone's breathing, their their chi has the capacity to change, right? And that energy follows consciousness. So if we are able to change our mindset, we change where our energy goes, we change what we focus on, um, we change our priorities, we change how we're living, and then we're able, it, it, it's able to filter down to the level of like, oh yeah, and now I'm not eating unconsciously, or now I'm, you know, not p- perpetually straining my shoulder at my desk because I, I, I'm, I've shifted my awareness, you know, or I've shifted what's Mm -hmm. possible for myself with my identity so that I'm making different choices in my daily life. And so it's really, yeah. So self-care strategist, it's like, I don't know whether that's, um, like I like it better than coach or consultant or, um, or practitioner just because it's, it it. it really is. It's like a partnership, right? Like where, where it's like, we get curious and, and, and we just, we unpack, uh, what's keeping people stuck. Yeah, I love it. I think it's such a. I like the wording. I really do. I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> cool. Did you make it up? I did. I love it. I, I, that's so cool because you, you are. I mean, you, you can tell that you have this like deep, deep passion for getting involved in people's lives and, and helping them change, which is which is why I'm glad we have you on. <laughs> Thanks. Well, transformation is the most exciting thing ever. I think you know, just like watching people, watching people step into the the people that that they want to become is so exciting. And that's really, I think what health is, right? It's not the absence of disease. It's being who we really are. A hundred percent, right? It's, it's exactly absence of disease is just a, people living a symptom free life, which is, doesn't mean anything. Right, exactly. And, and even, and we can totally be healthy and still have symptoms, right? Symptoms yeah. are, are just clues as yeah. to um, it, to keep us, um, to keep us going in the right direction. Yeah. So then this is, these are the, this is the final few questions here. Actually, it's really one question in three parts. Being that this is a lifestyle podcast, lifestyle locker radio, what three, since you used the word hack, I'm going to use it down now too. What three simple lifestyle hacks? And I know you're going to say there's all different types of people, and I agree. But what three simple lifestyle hacks can you say, you know, the, give any listener and say, listen, if you do these three simple little things, or it could be one broken into three separate parts, what can these three little things do to help improve your lifestyle, you know, one notch on the dial? Okay. That's a tough question. But I know um, it is. I'll That's start, why I gave it to you. I'll start with <laughs> own your mornings. If you can start your day at the top of your own to-do list, the likelihood that you're going to stay there goes way up. So if you start your day with being in touch with yourself, with a little bit of silence and reflection, you're going to get clear as to what's most important to accomplish that day, which is going to help you with lifestyle hack number two, subtraction. Right. Most people are out there trying to do way too much and getting clear on what really matters. Like what how do we want to feel that day? And really like let letting you have letting yourself have a one priority as opposed to a to do list of 10,000 things. Really get clear on what is enough for yourself that day. And I guess the third is is going to be to cultivate what I, I, I would call it the Wu Wei spot check, right? Wu Wei means effortless action. And it's part of it's from the Taoist philosophy um, that the right thing right now. And in order to do a Wu Wei spot check, you have to check in with yourself, you have to get present in real time with what the right thing is right now. And a lot of times if we bother to like, so just like you might stop and set an alarm five times a day to take a breathing break, if you want to recalibrate your nervous system back out of fight or flight and back into rest and digest, breathing is the most powerful tool to get there. 
But I would say, so like breathing could be uh, like to do this, to um, set, set that gentle alarm, be reminded to, to stop what you're doing, to just pause, to take those breaths, to drop in deep, and then ask yourself that what is the right thing right now? Because if your body is saying, I'm tired, and you're saying, no, 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 we're going to keep going, you're heading down the wrong track. If you're disobeying your sense organs, if you're disobeying your natural urges, you're creating disease. And most of us move too fast to even be in touch with what our bodies are saying. And so if you, if you start your day by owning your mornings, if you can, if you can cure your yang addiction by letting go of what's truly unnecessary to make time for what matters most. And if you are present, in, in the moments that matter, you have much more of an opportunity to recognize like, oh yeah, like, am I, am I eating because I need a break or would I be better off taking a walk around the block to give myself some energy? You're, you're going to be much more likely to be in respectful dialogue with your own inner wisdom. Win, win, win. I love those are great. <laughs> those are great golden nuggets right there, baby. I appreciate that. All right. All right. Miss Brody Welch, thank you so much. Uh, we are going to connect everybody with you. With We have all these links. You gave me so many awesome links, and they're going to all be in the <laughs> show notes. It's all going to be on my site. But I want, people to, I want people to take the quiz. I want people to connect with you. And if you're in, how do I say Corvallis, Oregon? Or Oregon? Corvallis, uh, Oregon. Yeah. Oregon. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll make sure. You know, I can say it wrong. I'm in the East Coast here. Uh, if you're in Corvallis and you want an acupuncturist, you better, you better hunt her down. Because it, and if yeah, and if you want a self care strategist, if you want to level up your life, um, you can just vis- visit me at brodywelch dot com. Brody with an I E, Welch with a C H, and there, yeah, there, there, you can be you can be part of my self healing tribe of people who are working to implement the uh, or to bridge the gap between what we know we should be doing for ourselves and actually doing it. Awesome, well, Miss Brody, thank you so much, and we'll see. It's you been a pleasure, Josh. Yeah. Oh, Lifestyle Locker Nation, how awesome was Miss Brody Welch? I want to make sure you get some of her details, which are going to all be in the show notes. We have a couple of giveaways. Actually, she's got a bunch of cool things that we're going to be giving away. Make sure you want to get the Common Centered Bundle. I want to make sure you get the free five-minute breathing meditation. You're going to find her website at brodywelch.com. Find a lot of things there, but you're going to make sure you... Head over to our show notes to check the rest of the details out. Also, her podcast, which we mentioned already. And you're going to find that at brodywelch.com slash podcast. I want to make sure you check out her signature program, which is called Level Up Your Life. Do what I did. What's your Chinese element? Definitely fill that out. It's pretty neat. Make sure you like her Facebook page. Make sure you give her a five-star review and listen to her podcast. It's cool. And while you're at it, give us a five-star review, too. Like her page, also A Healthy Curiosity, which is on Facebook. You can check her out on Twitter. All of these details will be in the show notes. So on a positive note, people, have an awesome week. So as one of my mentors, Garrett J. White, says, I think he says this, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Bye-bye.